Hey guys, so I just picked up these uh, Seismic soft doors for my 2020 Ranger 1000. Uh, I was kind of surprised, just like many of you, I go on YouTube to check out and see how somebody else installed them, uh, just to get an idea, and there was no videos out there about it. So I thought I'd uh, bring you guys along and just show you the process to go through. Um, first thing to do is just make sure you have all the parts. I did run into that problem where I was short on parts. But uh, Seismic was really good about it, and they shipped them out really fast, actually. I think they probably uh, two-dayed them, so it didn't become an issue for me, uh, but just something to consider. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, set these doors off to the side and uh, remove the old nets, uh, as we will no longer be needing those. So to remove the nets, you're going to need a half-inch socket here to remove the upper one. And then a T40, just like most of the bolts on this machine. Same T40 to remove the lower uh, bracket to mount the door. Ooh, a little bit of mud in there. And then the half inch socket again to remove the bolt back in here. And then we'll just remove the clip for where it attaches. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is gonna do the latch pin here. Uh, mine came disassembled. They don't show it like that. I'm not sure if that's the case for all of them. Uh, whatever the case, it's pretty simple to do. At least that's what it appears to be. So basically you're just going to take the latch pin, slip it through, put the nut on. You got an 18 mil on the back and then a 19 on the front. And it says to leave all this loose as there is a little bit of play there if you can see that. And then my kit, I don't know if you guys can see this. There's a little bit of knurling on that so it doesn't back off. Uh, I only had four of these. The only spot where you'd use four that are similar are on these latch pins. So I'm going to use them here. Worst case scenario, nothing changes. We're just going to use those existing holes that you had from the old clip that was here. Now these ones are 13 millimeters, unlike the other ones which are 12. And again, you're not going to want to tighten them all the way down. Just keep it kind of loose so they can move a little bit. Next we're going to install the upper hinge bracket here. And that's just using the M820s. 
so you got the hinge bracket and then you have the little stopper here with the, has the nuts in it. So you just slip that back behind, line it up and thread it in. Just like everything else, you want to leave it loose. And then we're going to move behind the cab here and install the lower bracket. There's pre-existing threaded holes here, so you're just going to reuse those. They seem to make a big deal of left and right brackets, but they can only go one way. So it's pretty obvious if it doesn't work, you got to use the other bracket. <laughs> Again, leaving it a bit loose for play. So the next thing that you would do is just slip the top rails onto the lower rails. As you'll see in your kit, it'll come in two pieces. It's really simple to do. I did have to use a little uh, rubber mallet just to tap them in. And then we'll take the M6 bolts and slip them through. You wanna make sure that the nut is on the inside and the button head screw is on the outside. For this, you'll use a 10 millimeter socket and a four millimeter uh, hex head. All right, so the next step is just going to be pulling this Velcro bottom half over the top of that bar there. And essentially, you're just going to make this so it's as tight as you can possibly get it because from this point on, you're going to be uh, either cutting or what I'm going to do is actually just melt through the uh, fabric and that's going to set your position for those hinge brackets. So you're going to want to make sure this is exactly where you want it at this point. So you want to tighten everything up as good as you can get it. All right, so what they tell you to do is take a razor knife and slit the fabric right where these holes are. You got three holes up here, three holes down here. I'm opting to use a torch and just like an awl, basically. I'm just going to heat it up and melt my way through. I'm not sure, maybe this stuff isn't prone to tearing, but I don't want to take the chance. All right, so next we're gonna mount our hinges on our door. And to do this, you're gonna put the spacer on, and then you're gonna put the hinge here. Then you'll take one of your longer bolts and feed that through, and then put your nut on the back and repeat. Then we'll use our 12 millimeter on the bolt side, 13 on the nut. And again, they want you not to tighten this. I feel like at some point here, we're gonna have to tighten something in order for stuff to line up. Still got some play in there. Now we'll move on to the lower hinge. Now same process down here, you're going to use that spacer again, 
and the longer 30 millimeter bolts. All right, so now that we got the hinges mounted on here, the next step is gonna be doing the gasket around your door. All right, so to do this, you're just gonna want some rubbing alcohol and a clean rag, and you're just gonna wipe down your seal point all the way around. And that's obviously on the inside here where the door is gonna push up against. So when I had to get those extra parts, like I mentioned, I uh, told them about like how this gasket was. And I mean, there's crap stuck to it. I mean, I don't have a whole lot of faith in this one, to be honest, but they were nice enough to send a new one with uh, the replacement parts I needed. So I have a spare at least. So nonetheless, I'm not too uh, worried if this does pop off because they already did send me a spare unit anyways. All right, so to start, you're gonna want the big side of the bulb. You'll see it's kind of like a, I don't know, almost like a right triangle, but you'll want the big side on the outward facing. So I'm just gonna start here. And work our way all the way around. And you wanna make sure you push this on firmly. That's kind of my main fears because I don't always plan on using these doors. I plan on taking them on and off. And I'm gonna get dirt and crud behind here and then I'm gonna power wash it and it's all gonna blast off. So I don't have a whole lot of faith in this. I know this 3M tape is pretty crazy stuff though. So I think as long as you're careful and you have a good, good uh, seal to start with. Like I said, this was had dust and everything stuck to it right from the get go, so. All right, so the next step is going to be to mount up the door here. It's going to be a little tricky and you might need to wiggle it around a bit because uh, nothing's obviously tightened down and in place. All right, so now that you got it on there, you're going to want to close it. You might have to lift up in order to do so. All right, so we got one click out of it there. They say don't worry about how tight the door closes yet because you can adjust that after. So you just want to make sure you got an even gap everywhere, which looks like we're doing all right on. All right, so once you're happy with how it fits all the way around, what you're gonna to want to do is tighten down all your hinge bolts. And you're also supposed to tighten down the striker bolt as you push on the door here and compress the gasket fully, it pushes that bolt in, which you need to tighten down afterwards. Because there's two stages to this latch here. You have the first click and then you have the second click. Now the way I just did that was I pulled it as tight as I could. While pulling it as tight as I could, that placed the striker where it needed to be. And then I opened the hinge while simultaneously pushing the door open. And that gave me my position here. So now that I'm sure that that's where I need it to be and I've sug snug had this snugged up enough, it's going to hold its position. I'm going to remove this real quick here and tighten it down and then just reinstall it i'm just going to repeat that process to find out where it needs to be 
And that's by pulling on the door real hard, compressing that gasket to where it needs to be. That seems to fit just about perfect. All right, so once you got your latch all tightened up and everything, what you'll want to do is look and see if you see any light coming through your seal at all. What they tell you to do is actually just open up your door and bend the frame here, that tube, just to seal up if you have any gaps. But as long as you're happy with it otherwise, and all your hardware is tightened up, you're done on the driver's side and you'll just have to do the passenger side and that's the same exact process. I hope you enjoyed this video and it was helpful for you. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, comment if you guys got any questions for me, and subscribe to my channel to see more videos. Thanks for watching.